Welcome to the CBIA BizCast. I'm your host, Ali Warshavsky. And today on our podcast, we're in Essex and we're speaking with CEO Adam Von Gluten of High Clear Castle Gin. Now, Adam, I have so many questions for you yes. because this is a business that is international, but your headquarters is right here in Essex, Connecticut. So I want to know why. What brought you right here to Essex? Well, you know, the, of course, the, the home for the brand is and will always be High Clear Castle. Mm -hmm. which of course is, is one of the most iconic and recognized castles in the world, in part because of the show Downton Abbey. And uh, High Clear is actually about an hour west of London in the UK. But I am from Connecticut, very proudly so, and live here with my family. And my family's been here for a couple hundred years. <laughs> so it's, uh, it's very much, as Lady Carnarvon calls it, kind of an Anglo-American love affair, this, this, the, the creation of this brand with roots in New England mm -hmm. and a home in England. And so for me, you know, it was important to me. I've always started businesses in Connecticut, and I've been a, a lifelong entrepreneur here. And so it was important for me to bring kind of this British brand uh, stateside, of course, and, and through the creation of it and the collaboration with, with Lord and Lady Carnarvon, my partners in the project. And so we are here in Essex in the beautiful Witch Hazel building, which is actually quite fitting mm -hmm. because this was a distillery for Witch Hazel. Um, so, and very much uh, even some rumors of having done some moonshining back during Prohibition <laughs> here. So a very beautiful town and a very beautiful state. In fact, this area along the shoreline around Essex actually reminds me quite a bit of the countryside around High Clare. So it's got a very kind of English feel to it. I love that. And now we were speaking um, off camera, but this is a passion of yours, making spirits. And not only yours, your families, you, you have a long history of developing spirits starting with moonshine, correct? Yeah, absolutely. My family had a distillery here in the 1800s that we lost, actually. The federal government took it away because one of my ancestors shipped a few hundred cases of whiskey up to Canada and tried to avoid paying the taxes oh, for it. Mm, um, and, it. And then we had a bit of a <laughs> reputation in Middletown, Connecticut, during, during Prohibition for our family hotel and the speakeasy that was in the basement. So all of those stories kind of came together to inspire me in my 20s to create a distillery in Connecticut called Onyx Moonshine, which we closed down to relocate right before COVID and the relaunch of the brand has not happened yet due to COVID. Mm -hmm. uh, but yes, our, 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 our history in the liquor industry goes way back and uh, Connecticut with its you know, farmland and fertile soil mm -hmm. uh, has always been a really good point, I think, for spirits production. Now we've got some wonderful distilleries in the state of Connecticut. Of course, worst distilled now, yes. Heidler Castle Gin is distilled in England mm -hmm. um, using botanicals from High Clare's estate. But, uh, but our base camp and headquarters is right here. I have so many questions about what it takes to make a spirit because um, I'm sure obviously there's the scientific process, yeah. but the, getting the flavor that you want just right. And you started this, or it was developed over two years. Yes. What does the development process look like to someone like me who has no idea how you make gin? Yeah, well, you know, there's, there's an art and there's a craft to distilling spirits, as you, as you referenced. No different than a chef will have to do with food or a winemaker with wine. Same kind of idea. High Claire, in a way, was both, was both challenging and very easy. If you can imagine approaching the castle, and if anyone who's seen Downton Abbey would know the kind of majesticness of the castle as you crest over the hill. Uh, my inspiration for High Claire Castle Gin was from within the castle, and in the estate around it. So what I mean by that is, in the castle itself, High Clare has hosted for centuries royalty, celebrities, statesmen, many of the world's most fascinating and interesting people. And Lord and Lady Carnarvon continue to host many of the world's most interesting people today. And for at least the last hundred years, those weekend cocktail parties have started with gin cocktails. We've got records of this handwritten by the butler in the 1920s that we discovered in the archives. So from one perspective, I kind of wanted to liquefy the spirit of the castle, that kind of bar, that incredibly high bar that they've set for hospitality. Outside of the castle doors are these beautiful, stunning botanical gardens. So for example, right behind the castle is the Victorian era orangery, where we source our little oranges, lime flowers, and lemons from, giving High Clare Castle Gin a very citrus forward mm -hmm. flavor profile. Behind that is the Walled Monk's Garden, where the lavender we use in our gin was planted by the Bishop of Winchester in the ninth century, so it's over 1,000 year old lavender beds. And we're actually the first gin in the world to use oats, which are famously grown at High Clare 
for thoroughbred racehorse feed. So it's very much the inspiration came from the terroir around the castle, mm -hmm. the liquefaction of Highclere's brand elegance, a kind of prestige and heritage came from within the castle itself. So in a way we had it easy. The difficult part was getting it flawless mm -hmm. because uh, what we all desired, Lord Lady Carnarvon and myself and the rest of my team, was to, is to truly embark on the quest to develop the perfect gin. And I think we've achieved it as now, as now shown by our 58 international triple and double gold awards earned from some of the most prestigious um, contests from around the world. When did this first hit the market? Uh, just a few lucky months before COVID uh, locked down <laughs> the entire hospitality industry all over the world. I hear people were drinking more during COVID, though, so that could, might have helped you. Unfortunately, obviously, yeah, they're yeah. not tasting it out in the restaurants or exactly. you know, being able to really freely pick it up. Exactly. The, the, I think the trend in the industry during COVID was people went back to value brands mm -hmm. that were tried and true and well-established. Mm -hmm. Brands like ours, you know, it takes many years to properly kind of saturate a brand and grow a brand in the market. So it was a amazingly difficult speed bump. But like the very English saying says, you know, we very much kept calm and carrying on. <laughs> and we had no choice but to do that. But, but I'm proud of the team and what we've accomplished in the two difficult years of COVID. And it's more exciting now for me to see um, in all of the countries where we're available the market coming back to life as, as we're kind of, as COVID's behind us. I'm glad to see restaurateurs mm -hmm. doing well again and how hotels full again and travel and tourism picking up. So it's, it's really good to see. Now, obviously, again, we are in Essex, Connecticut, um, but you're, you're making this over in Highclere Castle. Do you have a partner over there? Explain how this works to be a uh, two country product here. Yeah, it is a little bit, it is a little bit quirky in that way because we, we very much, it is kind of an Anglo-American mm -hmm. company. Um, as I mentioned, the botanicals are grown on the estate. Our distillery partner is actually the oldest gin distillery in all of England that houses actually the oldest copper pot gin stills in all of England. So we ship the botanicals to the distillery uh, where we distill a English wheat-based neutral spirit. Uh, I can uh, overly simplify the process Essentially, the botanicals are dried out. Mm -hmm. They're steeped in the spirit, mm -hmm. which is kind of like a vodka. Mm -hmm. Then when it, it's distilled, um, the vapors arise and the still carrying with it the oils of the botanicals. Mm -hmm. And voila, you've got, you've got the gin. But it's bottled there. Even our kind of beautiful gl uh, purple glass bottle is actually made in England as well. So we wanted it to be 100% produced and manufactured on, on British soil, mm -hmm. which it is. And your partner, you were explaining to me, is a... Uh related to royalty. Well, yes, so, so, so Lord and Lady Carnarvon, so, so Lord Carnarvon is the eighth Earl of Carnarvon, so his ancestors go back, you know, eight generations um, when the King of England had granted them that title mm -hmm. and, and the castle and kind of land that went along with that. Um, Lord Carnarvon's, uh, both his father and grandfather were racing managers to Her Majesty the Queen, and Lord Carnarvon is uh, Her Majesty's godson. So a very, very, very special, very unique and, and kind of um, um, special history that they go back with in, in England. Very old family. So this is the gin the queen is drinking is what you're saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might be a bit of a stretch, although I have heard. She does very much like gin. Okay. And actually this year, um, it, of course, is the, 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 the queen's platinum yes. jubilee celebrating 70 years on the throne. Mm. And it's, it's such an amazing thing. And she's such a beautiful person and so well respected around the world in a, in a time where, where, you know, the world is so divided politically and, and, and all those mm -hmm. sad things happening all around the world and COVID made it no easier and now this stuff happening in, in, in the Ukraine. Mm -hmm. So she's such a wonderful figurehead and so full of positivity and elegance and grace. And so, um, you know, rumor has it the Queen's favorite cocktail over lunch has always been a gin and Dubonnet which is a French aperitif. Mm -hmm. So we're very much celebrating this year with uh, High Clare Castle gin mixed with Dubonnet, mm -hmm. red Dubonnet, which you can get in most liquor stores. And we shake it with a bit of ice, mm -hmm. serve it chilled, and then top it with some very beautiful dry French champagne. Mm, that sounds amazing, especially yes. as summer approaches. Yes. Um, and your brand, High Clare Castle, if anyone's a fan of Downton Abbey, they've heard of this. You know, has that elevated your brand? Oh, for sure. I mean, Downton Abbey was the most watched TV series in human history, with <laughs> 250 million viewers. And of course, next month we have Downton Abbey, the film part two coming out. The first one did incredibly well in the box office. Yeah, of course, the, the, you know, I think Downton Abbey was responsible for kind of this 
resurgence and global popularity of all things historic Britain mm -hmm. and uh, things that's given rise to Bridgerton and, mm -hmm. and, and a lot of these shows and series and things. I think it's also given some great attention to England from a tourism perspective um, where people who maybe didn't realize the grandeur of, of, of the history of, of England and, and, and English countryside. And so it's brought a lot of attention to that. And of course, for our brand, being that Downton Abbey is entirely filmed at Highclere Castle, mm -hmm. um, it, it, it's brought a lot of recognition and uh, of, of our gin to the brand. Can you sneak a bottle in for the next uh, one? You know, just like in the side, in the corner, <laughs> you just get a little bit of branding in there. Well, you know, people ask, <laughs> people ask me that all the time. And um, it, unfortunately, the, the world of Highclere Castle and Downton Abbey can't coexist because the universe is... That's, oh, that's true. There is no that is true. It hasn't been developed exactly. yet. <laughs> although, although, although there's a really funny story about our, our, our COO, um, Pete. He was at Highclere delivering the very first batch of gin when it came out. So mm -hmm. he just stopped by the castle like, we've got the samples. The first samples are here. And uh, Hugh Bonneville, the, mm -hmm. the, the lead star in, in, in the show Downton Abbey, was there. And um, Pete had uh, an entire afternoon of having lunch next to Hugh Bonneville mm -hmm. of Downton Abbey. Towards the end of the lunch, he asked him, uh, so what do you do? And Hugh Bonneville <laughs> says, oh, I, I'm actually an actor. He's like, oh, have you been in anything? I would know. He's like, oh, I you know, kind of started the show called Downton yeah. Abbey. Is there sitting at Eichler having lunch? Yeah. So, uh, so yeah, it's, 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 a fun, it's a fun connection. Oh, I love that. And, you know, where is this gin available? Can you, can you, are there certain restaurants that are serving in Connecticut? Or um, where can you purchase it? We're widely available in, in all of the you know all of the liquor stores around Connecticut. Uh, many of the best restaurants, and uh, yeah, it's re relatively easy to get. You could also go to our website at HighclareCastleGin.com and buy a bottle and have it shipped right to your door. Um, but yeah, all the best liquor stores, many of the best restaurants uh, mm -hmm. are carrying us now. Okay, so we talked about where you can get it, how it's made, but what's next for you? I mean, this is just one of many projects. It seems that has uh, come along in your life. What's next for High Clear or you, yourself? Yeah, well, I th well, what's really exciting right now is just a couple of weeks ago, we actually launched a crowdfund mm -hmm. so that people can invest in and actually own equity in High Clear Castle mm -hmm. Gin. So that's a really fun way. Coming out of last year, we need to fuel our growth into Europe and into Asia. So we thought about how to go about doing that. And we were going to go the traditional investment bank route and do a, a Series B capital raise. But we thought, you know, with... Uh, with tens of thousands of customers and fans of our product now, mm -hmm. spanning 28 countries, we thought, wouldn't it be a, a wonderful way to kind of invite our customers to come, come along and join us on the journey as we're growing the brand and to, and to, and to benefit from it, mm -hmm. you know, to own stock in it and, and, uh, and kind of really be a brand ambassador and a shareholder in the company. So I'm really excited we're doing that on, um, on wefunder.com, which is one of the leading crowdfund mm -hmm. platforms. And we've raised a half a million dollars in just a couple of short weeks, which is quite quite exciting. So people are welcome to learn more by going to our WeFunder page. Um, in terms of new products, we are, we are developing something really unique right now. Mm -hmm. So this year, in addition to being the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, it is also the 100 year anniversary of the discovery of the tomb of King Tutankhamun by Lord Carnarvon's great grandfather, the fifth Earl of Carnarvon, <laughs> and famed archaeologist Howard Carter. So they discover this amazing tomb. Of course, the story goes that um, you know, Howard Car Carter's peering into the, the tomb door with some bricks removed, and, and he says to, to Lord Carnarvon, says, what do you see? And he says, wonderful things. It's, it's glinting off all the gold. <laughs> um, so to commemorate this, we've taken Eichler Castle gin, and we're barrel-aging it in 50-year-old Armagnac casks, mm -hmm. Scotch whiskey barrels, and new American oak barrels to do a very exclusive gold bottle that we actually developed in partnership with two famed Egyptologists, to get the hieroglyphs to be completely accurate. And so uh, so we're going to be releasing that in the fourth quarter of this year, just doing a very limited edition yeah. release for this, but it will be quite quite fun. For me personally, <laughs> what's new? Just working too much, and my wife is pregnant with our third child, oh, so exciting. I think I've lost my mind entirely because <laughs> we're doing that a third time and resetting that that, that 18, 20-year clock. Or whatever. <laughs> but uh, it's Well, all this good. is the college fund right here, right? Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> and then, you know, you, again, have talked about your experience with with being a businessman in Connecticut, starting with the moon, well, your family really starting with developing moonshine. What challenges have you run into, or, you know, or what is there, and what are some good things that you've come across about doing business in Connecticut? Well, yeah, it's a, it's a. I guess there's two sides to it. I mean, I have been in, in, in Connecticut proudly my whole life, and my, like I mentioned, my family 
My, my mother's a, a chafee, so it's a very old family from Rhode Island in, in Connecticut. And so we, we go back hundreds of years here. Like and, Loomis chafee? Exactly, yeah, <laughs> that, that, of that family. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and Governor Lincoln chafee mm-hmm. of Rhode Island. And, and so we, we go way back, and I'm very kind of proud of Connecticut, and, and I'm, I'm definitely a proud New Englander. I think um, I found that the state has been very um, accommodating and friendly over the years to helping businesses get going, mm-hmm. just being supportive of entrepreneurs and entrepreneurship. There's a lot of good programs, grant programs and things like that that, um, that the state offers. I think on the other, on the other hand, um, I, think, I think that the state and the town can be, you know, it, it's such a, a, a heavy bureaucracy mm-hmm. and there's so many rules and regulations everywhere that it does make it hard for companies to prosper. It does make it hard for companies to hire and, uh, and unfortunately, you know, I think we see in the data that, you know, it's not really quite being the bastion of innovation and manufacturing that I think it could be. We're not seeing like, you know, a, a, a net gain of people every year. Kind of, um, you know, I think people are taking advantage of the, uh, the opportunities in Texas and, and Florida and things like that. So, you know, it's, it's, it's tough. How do you fix a bureaucracy that's very top heavy mm-hmm. and um, when there's so much money involved? making it so top heavy and I think that's part of what the challenge is so you know the, the state has to figure it out and each community has to kind of figure it out and figure it out kind of soon how do we make the state more attractive for investment we we were able to um, raise a significant amount of capital independently in, in Connecticut here I've got about 15 um, full-time management employees um, here at the company based in Connecticut and another you know 20 or 30 around the around the country for a Connecticut-based company. So I think that we've done, we're trying to do our part to employ quality people and attract them here, and, uh, and, and very proudly so. Well, thank you so much for agreeing to come on the podcast. We're excited to see where High Claire Castle Gin goes and um, excited to taste it as well. Thank you, Ali. We'll do that right now. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for listening to the CBIA BizCast. You can listen to more episodes on Apple, SoundCloud, and for more, you can also visit CBIA.com.